students, let's complete talking about the nine phyla of animals. Let's start talking about platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes like flatworms and uh, tapeworms. Flatworms, example of flatworms, tapeworms. Look at those two pictures. What do you think the common characteristics in flatworms? Number one, they are flat. What the meaning of flat? They don't have thickness. They have thin body, thin body uh, plan. Which kind of symmetry do they have? They have bilateral symmetry, exactly. So if you draw an axis here, the body will be divided into two halves that are mirror to each other, the right and left half, so bilateral symmetry. How many germ layers do they have? They have three germ layers, not like cnidarians. So they have three germ layers. What are those three germ layers? Ectoderms, endoderm, mesoderm. Ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. They have only one opening for the digestive cavity. What the meaning of one opening? This opening for both ingestion and digestion, for getting in of nutrients and getting rid of waste. They don't have rooms for respiration or respiratory system. They don't have rooms for true digestive system. And also, they don't have rooms for circulatory system. So how do they get their nutrients and oxygen? Through diffusion, through the process of diffusion. That's why I told you the body is so flat and thin. Why so flat and thin? To help the process of diffusion to get in nutrients and get rid of waste. Let's see the next phyla. Nematodes. Nematodes like round worms. Nematodes or round worms, they are unsegmented. They don't have segmentation, specialization of certain segments. Their body symmetry is bilateral symmetry. Uh, most of them are parasitic. Parasitic means they uh, live in a parasitism. Uh, they cause diseases like uh, trichinosis, example of uh, roundworm that causes trichinosis, trichinella. And this disease is caused by eating uncooked pork. There is another species, C. elegans. This C. elegans uh, is used uh, a lot uh, in uh, molecular studies, uh, studying of genes and embryonic development. Let's talk about annelids. The next phylum, annelids or segmented worms. So when we just started talking about annelids, we will start to talk about segmentation in animals. We will start to talk about closed circulatory system. What the, mount, uh, what the meaning of segmentation? It means that the body is segmented, composed of different segments, as you see, and uh, each segment uh, have a specific each uh, group of segments has a specific function. Look here, this is the digestive tube, the mouth, the first opening, and then after that, the food will enter through the mouth and stored in the crop and will move from the crop to the gizzard in the gizzard, breaking down of food, and then after that into the intestine for completion of digestion. So each part in this tube has a specific function. They have structures for getting rid of nitrogenous waste and urea. Those structures are called nephridia. So if I asked you which phylum is characterized by having nephridia, the first phylum is uh, phylum annelids. They have closed the circulatory system. What the meaning of closed the circulatory system? It means that they have heart and blood vessels that are connected by blood capillaries. Look at this figure to compare the closed circulatory system and open circulatory system. Here in the closed circulatory system, the heart and blood vessels and the blood vessels are connected through blood capillaries, very thin blood vessels here. There is no cavity for the blood uh, to, uh, to be filled with the blood, not like the open circulatory system. Like arthropods, they have open circulatory system. There is a cavity filled with blood and there is direct contact between the blood, vessel, blood cells and blood.
look this is open circulatory system and this is the closed circulatory system of course the closed circulatory system is more efficient than the closed circulatory system the opened circulatory system they are hermaphrodite what's the meaning of hermaphrodite hermaphrodite means the one individual has both male and female structures and they can diffuse also or they can get oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide through diffusion through the moist skin that's why their skin is always moist look the earthworm and the uh, leeches